A guy who really does like international tractors or farm alls. I also like small block Chevys of pretty much any flavor. So I did the right thing and bought a small block Chevy 350 swapped farm all H tractor. Sight unseen, hasn't run in many years. Of course, I'm gonna to try to get this thing fired up and drive it to my shop 35 miles. Probably the best idea yet. Nope, this is gonna take days. Only saw two pictures of this thing, but the title was V8 Farmall. So I did the right thing and digital messaged him immediately and said, yep, I'll take it. And these kind of just sealed the deal, you know. Darren's the guy that built it. It's all custom made. He gave me the 10 cent tour, but let's walk around this thing, see if we could figure out how this thing is put together and works. And then we'll dig in and see if we can get it fired up. It's been sitting here for years. Probably gonna have to do the typical routine. Drain the fuel, change the oil, look through the lightning system. I don't know yet. We gotta see what we got going on. I guess the first thing a guy should do is check the year. It's up here on the transmission housing. Of course, this confirms it's an H, built by International Harvester Co. 216 starts the serial number, which I believe is it's gotta be a 46 or 47. These were built from 39 to 53 and they were considered a row crop tractor. And they had the standard row crop, the high crop, standard tread, industrial tread, and I think they even made a orchard setup, which was pretty rare, but this was one of the most common tractor. They made tens of thousands and thousands of these, hundreds of thousands. Then they had the Super H and a couple different variants, but these put out about 25 horse to the bar, and I guess they were kind of a competitor to like the Ford 9N, which had a three-speed transmission, unless you had the Sherman High-Low. This has a five-speed transmission, so even though it's the same horsepower or relatively close, guy could get a little bit more done with the five-speed, you know? He can go to town, maybe even. We're gonna find out today, if we can, I guess. But let's continue to look around this thing. I mean, at first glance, it seems absolutely complete. Is in fact a small block Chevy 350. We've got a manual transmission, four speed behind that jammed into the international transmission, which is pretty, pretty unique. Let me get you in here. There's so much to look at here. Guy doesn't even really know where to start. I think we'll just start drinking it in a little at a time. As you can see there, this thing is just stuffed in there. Custom frame, this is extended. I believe he said 16 inches. I guess we could see that here to here. It's two hoods put together. So I would assume this is the original tin. And then this is an add-on. And where he cut it was to keep the body line. That's pretty cool. Even has a notch for the fuel pump there. Notch for the starter relay. We'll figure out what's going on there in a minute but it's all complete. Tires are in great shape. Should have brought the flex seal. That would have brought them around to brand new. Thankfully, we've got shock later and spring later seat. That'll be nice going down the highway if we get her fired up. Let's see what kind of small block we have here. Casting number will tell us over here. It's a 3970014. Wow, usually they're 397-0010, which is a really common two bolt 350, but a 1.4 is actually a LA made Camaro 350. Depending on the setup, which is carburetor or smog, these made between two and 300 horsepower right from the factory. So this isn't one of the lazy 350s. She's got some snort to it. That's pretty cool. And then we've got the four speed here, which is probably a 465 or something like that. Not quite sure. We can look closer in a minute. There's that tag, 216829. So like I say, it's probably a 47. But I don't know. If you know, bleep it down below. 
We've got ignition up here and whoops, it's a little floppy. Water gauge. He did say if it did get going, temperature is going to be an issue. Look how small this little fan is to fit in here. And it's got that little tiny radiator running this V8. So that could be an issue. Look at all the chrome on this. Chrome timing cover. She's got a chrome oil pan. I mean, we've got another 98 horsepower in chrome on this thing, at least. Front tires, you know, they're bad, so that's good. The one thing I am noticing though, let me get the checker. Yep, that's good, 22 pounds of air. What about this one? 26 pounds, that should probably work. So how you said this works is we figure out a gear we want, you jam this in, then you jump up here and a guy would fire it up in neutralis and then you use the clutch here and the five speed for your final drive. So you can go one to one if you wanted to or not if you want higher RPM and then so basically it ends up being I don't know how to do the math, 914 gear. That's pretty cool. It's a PTO output. Does not have a three point obviously, but that's okay. Hopefully the clutch works and everything like that. Let's, uh, let's get this tin off and maybe we could see a little bit more of how this thing's put together. No idea how this comes off or if there's a particular way. I think we'll just start pulling until it bends or breaks off. Oh, she's got some heft. Goodness. Oh, yep, liking this. Hey, it's HEI, it's not points. That's nice. We got a, uh, is that an Edelbrock or? No, I don't think so. Looks like a Carter maybe. Yep, vacuum port's on the side. We got a Carter Fort barrel on her. And we've got some sort of extra coolage going on here. Hmm. Also got a custom charging whirler bracket. Looks pretty sweet. Let's see what we got for Earl on this. <laughs> Just barely, barely on the stick. Hmm. It's not that bad though. I'd say 1030. Probably could be changed. There's definitely a massive leak. Looks like valve covers probably is where all that's going. Lightning whirlers on here tight. That wasn't jumping around at least. Huh. Guy might just have to run this without the hood, if I'm being honest. Looks pretty snazzy. You can already tell it's got really rotten fuel in it. This is pretty smart, actually really smart. These are heater cores out of a F series Ford pickup that are looped through the heater system. So intake, and then these are looped together and then back to water pump with little fans on it. So this is like a auxiliary radiator basically. So that might help with cooling a little bit, but definitely shows us he was having some issues keeping it cool. But again, this tiny little rad is gonna be the main issue and that little fan, maybe a digital fan up on that might help a little bit or even just running without the hood, but we'll have to see. Running that many miles down the highway, it's probably, I don't know, might help with more wind, might not help with the ripums. We'll just have to wait and see. But this is really cool. Even got a relay in here and a fuse panel. I'll be dipped. Are they good? That one is. Don't know what it does. What's this one? That one's good. Hmm. This one's cruise control, maybe. Nope. Blue teeth. I don't know what it does. That one. Oh, that's the relay one. Hmm. So, pretty neat custom setup. He made his own bar here that goes to the original clutch, comes into the four speed there. Let's see. 
I don't know what gear. We'll have to play with that a little bit, I guess. Try to figure that out. Steering's all the same. Just been extended. You can see from here to here. Throttle is backwards, but it'll work. So it looks like forward is all the onions. I think it used to be the other way. You pull back the throttle, just like the Ford tractors. Plenty of grease and oil on it. That means it's got something in it, maybe. Custom headers. Pretty neat unit. Must be 12 Vs. Yep. Charging whirlers all hooked in. Or does he have a digital fan? Oh, he does. Right there. Of course, he already thought of that. So there is a digital pusher. And you got this tiny little mechanical puller. And then you got the auxiliary juice laters, 1,000 and 2,000, trying to cool her down as well. Urson? Sure. Let's see what we got for fuel. <coughs> it's probably fine. Nope, that's got to be changed immediately. Oh, I guess I could have just looked in the glass here. Extremely varnished. That's also leaking, so that's good. So I think step 42 is going to be, let's see, this runs down to here. I think I could just snag it off over here and snip this old gas out into a pail somewhere. And then we can put some fresh fuel in this. And maybe even while that's going on, we can change on the Earl really quick, because that's easy how this is set up. Okay, is that a plan? No. Say it ain't so. Maybe well, uh, that's empty too. Draining on the old gasolina there. Guy could maybe even change on the Earl, since this is gonna be pretty easy how this is laying out in the open. Don't ever tell anyone that this kind of sounds like a plan, especially my wife. <laughs> the list would get long. You know what I mean, fellers? You know, on 16th thought, I think a guy's gonna inspect on it just for a minute here before I dump the billfold in her. I'm gonna pull a sparkulator out and read on it a little bit so we can get a baseline of how it was running previously. And then just for giggles and what have who's, I'm gonna jam a borescope in there and just see what the cylinder wall looks like. Then I think we'll go straight to just dumping some fuel down there and see if we can get this thing to bark off or at least attempt to run. And if it does that, then I know it's worth the time and money to drain the fuel and put some oil in it and maybe some fresh sparklators. I don't know. I don't know what they look like yet. A little bit different setup today. Instead of my wife just dumping me off with my tools and leaving me to fend for myself, she's actually staying with me because if I get this thing running, I want to make sure that, you know, we get it home safely. I've rode it a lot of tractors, but it's always nice to have a follower behind you with the flashers on. I don't know how fast this is going to go. I'm guessing 12, 13, 13.7, maybe 14, not sure, most likely 11. But anyway, I'll get an SMV sign up on it, but going to have a follower rig. And that way, too, if it breaks down or we don't quite make it, guy can just ease her into the ditch and then jump into the go on the town truck and maybe come back? Probably not. But anywho, my youngest wants to help, so he's gonna pull out some sparkulators for us. Lefty Lucy. Yep. Here. So looking at the sparkulator here, Something a feller needs to learn how to do in his lifetime is read on these, because that's going to tell you everything you need to know about your engine. And this one's looking pretty good, actually. It's got a soot ring that's complete all the way to the ground strap. Ground strap's telling me that this plug is just a little too hot in the heat range. And this is a 45 TS. All TS means is tapered seat. It could probably use a 43 or 44, but... This looks good enough to just leave in here and run it, to be honest. I don't see any reason to have to change these, which is good news for me, because that saves like 
18 bucks, no more than that, 22? I mean, they're getting expensive. So we're gonna pretend we looked at the rest and just jam this back in, but first, let's stick a scope down there, see what we got going on. Hello? I don't know, it's probably working. Oh, it is. Jam this in here quick. Oh, hello piston, you are at TDC. Okay, well, we're gonna pull a different sparkulator out because this one's on the top. Let me figure out in my brain. Yep, I know which one to pull out. And then we'll get a better look at the whole cylinder wall. So I'm seeing lots of vertical scarring and a very prominent ring ridge right there on the top. So this engine is definitely tired. I can also see, which you guys, I apologize, you probably can't see, much lean forward maybe hold it hold your eyes on the tv i don't know there's a lot of pitting in there and it's like rust pitting so that tells us this engine has been sitting for a very very long time the other sparkle later looked the same so i mean if they're all bad that's good right consistency is key said probably no one i don't know how to get the salad bowl off here i'm just there's layers I'm just digging stuff out of here. Hmm. These do make the most horsepower though. Out of any air filter setup. I think I saw that on Engine Masters one time. Well, I am spending 14 months trying to get this thing out of here and drop this nut down the fuel and make it happen. Ooh, I got it. What's your favorite kind of air filtration system? Is this gonna get out of here? Uh-oh. Bend. There we go. Huh. I think these salad bowl configurations do make the HPs though. See, that's gonna be locked up there. I wonder if I should disco that for now. Then I can run it right here. Let's do that. Instead of having to jump up here and run it. Open, open. Well, it's free. Everything moves. Zero squirter action. So, bowls leaked. That's good. They're known for that. So, we're at par. Is that a golf term? Or is that a town? I think it's both. I'm not sure if par is good. Let's go with double eagle. Well, I think at this point, just to see if it spins over, make sure she's a neutralis. Oh, she's a heavy old girl. Tires are flat spotted. Okay, that seems like Neutralis. Let me, uh, should probably jump up here just in case she wants to move. All right. Ooh, I like how the clutch pedal breaks the water temp gauge off. Bring the thunder. Bring it again. Here we go. <sighs> Nothing. Really strange, but the battery's dead. Huh, the guy's brain actually fired up this morning. I brought the battery charger Farm and Ranch 3000, so Bentley's gonna hook that on for us. And we'll just start, you know, boiling that. Downside is, I guess we're gonna have to actually work in the meantime while that cooks. So maybe we'll just gamble and go ahead and just start draining the fuel out of this thing. That's probably the least expensive thing that we can do. Yep, nope, not sure. Can't do math. <laughs> I brought my boat tank just in case a feller needs to run off of that. So I'm gonna do the right thing and drain all of this bad gas into the boat tank and then I got five gallons of, I'm not sure where it came from. The shed at the house, which means it's from the snowblower from last year. Eh, that's fine. And then we'll dump that in there and see what happens. I wanna snag that lid off. Give her a yeah. Right, see? When in doubt, just apply brute force, okay? Snag the, oh yeah, just, whew, 
Love that smell. Ooh, can't waste it though. Let's clean the hands up a little bit. There we go. All right, crank this on. We should get some positive gravitage flowage. What do we got? What do we got? It needs a little help, I guess. Oh, this is so bad. That ain't gonna work. Let's see, if I bend my charger. Oh, right in the eyes. <clears throat> Need better footing. <sighs> Great way to start the morning. And that did nothing. <sighs> Varnish, mustache, it's my favorite. Sometimes that doesn't work. So you got to prime them by doing the old succulization. Whew. Have a restriction in the tank. I can blow through and get bubbles in the glass bulb but it's not flowing. So the bottom of the tank where it comes into the glass site, that must be plugged because I just ain't getting nothing. So this does gravity feeds and then runs out, of course, but crank this open. Something wrong and got no fuelage. So I'll get something and uh, get this diaphragm off, little filter thing and see if I can get some stuff jammed up in there. Maybe a can of carb cleaner. It's most likely just rust stuff up in here. Hopefully I don't have to take this off and spin this out. I don't think I brought any goop to reseal that if I gotta undo it here and twirl it off. Hopefully I don't. Should be able to give her just a couple tss tss. Let's see what that does. Oh yeah, plenty of gunk. Let's see now. There we go. Fuel. So that did that. That's good. This is saying the battery's bad. Even after boost. Bad battery. And I don't have a side postulator battery with me. But maybe I got the... Adjust-O-Matic Lugalizers, not sure. I'll go look. So a guy's got side post to top post adapters, but not the other way around. But I do carry extra battery cables. And if I swap these cables out for these, then I could run the top post battery that I bought. And we should, you know, be able to get this working. Shouldn't be too bad, basically just disco that there. And just Snip this off, run it to the same ground pretty much. Should be good to go. I think he might have put a bigger, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. I got my Lone Wolf 6000. That's how I was testing the battery and even on boost, it is not going to come around. Starting to trust this little thing here, even though it's one of those new fancy tell you what to do kind of units. It said it's bad and I guess it's bad. I don't know. New batteries in. Super start. Premium. Really upgraded on her. New cables are in as well. I did move the ground from the old starter housing bolt here because the clamp was split. Maybe not making the best kind of contact. So I moved the ground over to the bell housing bolt up here. And we'll see 
See what we get now. Nothing, because you got to turn the key on. And then now we'll see what we get now again. Nothing, because we don't have this hooked up right. Oh, it fell off. <laughs> I knew that. Spinning, oh, we got positive mouse nestage up in the flywheel here. Starter sounds terrible. Perfect. I don't see any bones falling out yet, but gonna have to get the scope up in there again. Those can definitely cause an issue, even bind stuff up. Also, looks like we've got coolant already leaking from the front. Great. Well, I think we got a majority of it out. She was just packed up in there. Can't see any more, so I think that's going to be okay-ish. The starter that's clearly failing, I don't even know how that even gets in there. So I really hope that hangs on. Also up here, you can see the water or coolant or whatever it is. I know exactly where that's coming from. Yep, I can see it down here on the bottom crank pulley is the weep holes weeping, which means this water pump has, I don't know, very, very limited time left. If not, it's already shot. And that could also be part of the overheating issue on this. But anywho, let's ignore all of that. And let's just dump some fire maker down here and see if this thing will at least pop off. Guy really does not like spraying carb cleaner and brake cleaner and stuff like that straight down the yap, unless you're really in a pickle. It's about the worst thing you can do to an engine. I got some old gas here and some two stroke, mixed to about 40 to one. A Little bit of oil in there is gonna help lubricate the top end and stuff, especially on an old dry start like this. I'm gonna get some in the bowls real quick. If we're lucky, it might even sit here and idle, who knows? And a little bit down here. All right. See what happens. First start in years. Actually, let me check neutral again. <laughs> Fired right off. These old Chevys, man. I tell you what. I didn't see if there was much coming out of the exhaust. Let me try it again here real quick. Bring the thunder. Oh, it's definitely a runner. <laughs> it's actually not as loud as I thought it would be, especially with the pipe later. You know, it's pretty near right in a guy's listening hole. Well, I think real quick, this dropped this oil, changed that fast, mazzle. Obviously the lightning system works, so that's great. We're gonna still ignore the bad water pump. Okay, good, check. So what were we doing? Oh, oil, okay. Gotta get my small block Chevy oil pan wrench. There we go. Hopefully this is already 700 degrees. Nah, it's still very cold. And there was a little bit of viscosities left in there. Ooh, that might look like a touch of water in there, or is that gas? Hmm. That was literally all the oil that was in this machine. I'm glad I didn't sit there and run it over more. It was empty, empty. What do we got on the Mega Mump? Yeah, quite a bit of metal, actually. Okay, let's see what we got here for filterage. What is it? What do you got? What do we got here? Parts master? Sure. That must be a kind of a implement brand or something. I don't know. You know, I've done a lot. And I mean copious amounts of oil filters. And I don't think I've ever seen a parts master. If any of you got any info on those, 
bleep bloop that. Kind of curious. Guy's gonna go with a Wix filter, of course, and then we'll tell a T4. Forgot my marker. It's gonna write the date on here. I'll just have to do that when I get it to the shop. Can't see nothing. I don't know. That's close enough, isn't it? Yep. Seems like it. I wonder what Brooks and Dunn is doing today. Hmm. Guy's also gonna put a fill filter on here since we're actually running a pump. It's probably gonna pull most of the junk right past the sediment bowl and just straight forward towards the pump. So I'm gonna put one in up here. Hope that I can catch some of this junk in this tank. Probably really should have come off and been, you know, cleaned, but we'll just pretend I did that. Swing this down. I think we'll have to put kind of a goofy loop in here, but I don't want any tight bends in the line, you know? Sure, I'm getting hungry and thirsty. I wonder if there's a tavern on the way a guy could just ease into. I thought this was JB Weld or something in the bottom of the sediment bowl, but it's not. That's all just rust and gunk, and there is some sort of grayish stuff. I wonder if that's pipe dope or something from that fitting, but probably the culprit in that being plugged up there. We've got fresh oil. Got this in here, dangerously close to the exhaust. That's fine. Do battery cables. I think I'll go ahead and fill the bowls up one more time. We can turn this fuel on, get this flowing. Oh, it was flowing. Did I plug already? Great. Oh, there we go. Might be a touchy pitcock here. Get my adjuster out. That's going to be a problem. Great. So this tank is an issue. That's got to come off and this needs to be cleaned out. It's not going to work. So I'm going to do the right thing and just ratchet strap my boat tank to the frame here. I already got that plug straight in and all I got to do is just top her off. This one's even got a gauge. I'll be dipped. Fill the bowls up again. See if we can maybe get this to fire and then stay running for a couple minutes. See if the fuel pump works. Stuff like that. Nerve wracking part for me is always of course hearing if you got any knocks or bangs or stuck lifters. And then the big one is head gaskets. The engines sit around this long. You gotta bring them gaskets back around nice and easy. Make sure they seat up and everything. All right. Ignition hot. Bring the thunder. Runs very poorly. A lot of popping through the fuel make it happener. Um, almost sounds timing related or valve. I wonder if a valve is down. Hard to say. But that does not sound happy at all. I wonder if I could stick a timing light on it real quick. But first, I wonder if a guy can just run his ear meter across it. All right. I'm gonna see if I can meter on the timing here a little bit. Yeah, our fuel issue is already biting us. Huh. I'll also get some ice cube juice in here. That way if we do get it running, 
for more than a minute, the water pump can just, you know, leak all this out on the ground. What is going on here? I wonder if this is winterizing the pitcocks open right now. I don't hear it hitting the floor yet, so. Oh yeah, now she's really running out. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna make it home. Well, let's try it anyway. Bring the thunder! Yeah, I think she's got a burnt valve or two or three. Air fuel adjustments aren't doing much and neither is timing. Oof. Boy, these are really convenient now that they're red hot right here. If I'm lucky, I'll lay my arm on it at least 15 times a day. That's been replaced on. So is that. Looks like the old blue streak lightning rotor in there. Module's been replaced. Cap's been replaced. Well, let's put this back on. We'll check the firing order. Make sure that's at least close. You don't need them all right. That's why there's eight. Well, you little devil. There we go. Okay, get that back on. Kind of like working on a van. You got everything right here up in your teeth once you get the doghouse off. So here's where a guy is at. This feller's got to leave, which means I'm out of time. I don't know, we've heard it run for 15, 20 seconds. Definitely some burnt valves, some other issues going on. No idea if the cooling fans work, but we're gonna jam it on the road anyway and see how far we get. Great, got a bad hydraulic leak out of the belly there, but it did move. Got her up on the road there. I don't know. I think we'll just stab it on the road. Got a water pump issue and it ain't running hot, but we'll see how far we can get anyway. That's the fun of it. No, nope. pain in the rear. What this old girl really needs is a leak down test and Really no point in a compression test, I guess. We know it's really tired, but I really don't think it's gonna make it that far. Maybe we could find a bar and grill or something where we can, you know, eat. Wet the back neck, that's priority for me. Maybe I could sweet talk them in and just park in this on the driveway for a little bit. We'll see how it goes the first mile. Maybe we can make it today. Hard to say, we got about six hours till sundown. So here we go.
up to about 200 degrees right now. I've got it idle down as far as I can get it. It's kind of an odd combination of trying to get air through the thing, but keep the RPMs down. I'm in third gear on the TM transmission and fifth on the bar ball, so this is it. Those two little fans did kick on. Well, so far it's staying right at 200. Of course, it shot up when we stopped because the water pump ain't twirling. This is an issue. That crush washer was missing out of that drain plug. So we're losing quite a bit of oil there. Fans are running. They must be on a temp sensor somewhere. Got a bad valve cover leak there. That's sizzling. And we're at half a tank of fuel. And I don't even think halfway there yet. I'll have to check in a minute. So we're going to need fuel. We're going to need oil. Maybe even a crush washer. But first, you know, let's get the important stuff done. Guy's done with dinner there. You know, lunch and dinner. Scooted her over in the dirt over here. I leaked 48 quarts onto the concrete. Sorry, dang it. This ain't gonna work. I mean, it's just dripping too much. So I found an old crush washer in my toolbox that I took out because it was bad. So I'm gonna pretend it's not bad and try to put that in. So I'm gonna do the sneak out, sneak in move. This is also getting profusely worse. Needs replacement, not gonna do it. So I'll try to top that off. It's, uh, you know, a balmy 170 right now. I might be able to get that cap off. Whoops, wrong hand. Can't feel that one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's hot. So I gotta pour some water on that, cool it down, try to get the cap off. Top that off, because I know it's low. And then I got some more T4. We'll try to dump that in here and see if we can make it the rest of the way. I only made it about 12 miles, so what's that mean for math? Another 20, 25, something like that? That might have actually worked. That's still leaking like crazy, but I did top it off. I also bathed her, get the temperature down a little bit. It actually worked, got down to about 150. Topped her off with fuel. The oil that did come out, you want to talk about a glitter party. I think what's going on, if I were to guess, is the camshaft is grinding its own cam profile. So we're gonna let that continue. Who knows what it's gonna come up with. Could be pretty good. But I think we got a shot at maybe, maybe making it. As long as these old hoses, the water pump hangs in there, it doesn't overheat. We don't drop a valve. Whoops, better put this back. You know, basically there's a whole lot that could go wrong. The good of today is it's a beautiful day. Not too shabby.
fire. We made it 35 miles in a tractor that hasn't been in years. Homemade V8 swap. I don't even know how to explain what just happened. It was bumpy, hot, really loud, but we did it. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.